In this lecture, let's talk about actions that you can perform on RDDs. Actions are the second type of RDD operation. They are the operations which will return a final value to the driver program or persist data in an external storage system. Actions will force the evaluation of the transformations required for the RDD they were called on. Next, let me walk you through some of the most popular actions in Spark. Collect. Collect operation retrieves the entire RDD and returns it to the driver program in the form of a regular collection or value. Let's say you have string RDD when you call collect action on it. You would get a list of strings. The same applies for other RDD types as well. So after the resulting RDD is returned, we can manipulate the results such as iterate over the collection to print them out at the driver machine or persistent them into disk. This is quite helpful if your Spark program has filtered RDDs down to a relatively small size and you want to deal with it locally. Just be aware that the entire data set must fit in memory on a single machine as it all needs to be copied to the driver when the collect action is called. So collect action shouldn't be used on large data sets. In a lot of cases, collect action can be called on RDDs because they are too large to be fit into the memory of the driver machine. Collect operation is widely used in unit tests to compare the value of our RDD with our expected result, as long as the entire contents of the RDD can fit in memory. Let's take a look at a collection example under the rdd.collect package. Here we have a list of words in the driver program. Then we call parallelize method on the Spark context object to convert the list of words to a string RDD. Then we can call collect on the string RDD to convert the RDD back to a list of strings. Lastly, we print the contents of the list of strings. Let's run this application. To run this application, just use the spark submit command that we saw in the previous lectures. Open a terminal and type spark submit and the path to our file. Next operation, we want to talk about count and count by value actions. If you just want to count how many rows in an RDD, count operation is a quick way to do that. It would return the count of the elements. Count by value will look at unique values in the each row of your RDD and return a map of each unique value to its count. This is useful when your RDD contains duplicate rows and you want to count how many of each unique row value you have. We have already seen the usage of count by value in our previous word count example. It'll return us a map of each word and its count. Let's take a look at another count example under the rdd.count package. This time, we'll run this application first. To run this application, just use the spark submit command that we saw in the previous lectures. Open a terminal and type Spark submit and the path to our file. We have an import string RDD. If we call the count operation on the RDD, it'll give us the total count of items in the RDD. The duplicates would count as well. We have two Hadoops in the RDD. Both of them count. Next, we call count by value on the RDD. This will return us a map of each unique word and its count. As you see, we have two Hadoops. In other words, only appear once. Next, we talk about the take action. Take action takes an element from the RDD. This operation can be very useful if we would like to take a peek at the RDD for unit tests and quick debugging. You can just take, let's say, the first three rows of the RDD and print them out to the console. Take will return n elements from the RDD, 
and it'll try to reduce the number of partitions it accesses. So it is possible that the take operation could end up giving us back a biased collection, and it doesn't necessarily return the elements in the order we might expect. Let's open the take example under the rdd.take package. Just run this application. To run this application, just use the spark submit command that we saw in the previous lectures. Open a terminal and type spark submit and the path to our file. As you see, we have the same string RDDs here. If we call take operation on the string RDD, it gives back three elements from the string RDD. The next action is save as text file. Save as text file can be used to write data out to a distributed storage system such as HDFS or Amazon S3 or even local file system. We have already seen the usage of save as text file in lots of our previous examples. The last action we want to talk about is reduce. Reduce is probably the most common action in our Spark program. The reduce action takes a function that operates on two elements of the type in the input RDD and returns a new element of the same type. Spark RDD reduce function reduces the elements of this RDD using the specified binary function. This function produces the same result when repetitively applied on the same set of RDD data and reduces to a single value. With reduce operation, we can easily sum up all the elements of an RDD, count the total number of elements, or perform some other types of aggregations. Let's take a look at the reduce example file under the rdd.reduce package. Here we have an integer rdd of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If we call reduce function on the rdd, the reduce function we pass in takes two arguments. What the function does is to return the product of those two arguments. This reduce operation will be applied to all the items in RDD and return a single value, which is the product of all the integers in the input RDD. Let's run the application. To run this application, just use the spark submit command that we saw in the previous lectures. Open a terminal and type spark submit and the path to our file. As you see, we got 120, which is the product of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It's time for you to do a practice. We open the sum of number problem file under the sum of numbers package. Your task is to create a Spark program to read the first 100 prime numbers from the prime nums text file and print the sum of those numbers to council. Let's open the prime nums text file under the in directory. As you see, each row of the input file contains two prime numbers separated by spaces. It's your turn to implement the solution. We will discuss the sample solution in the next lecture.